<clears throat> so it's 10.30 a.m. Uh, Thursday, 2nd of August, 2018. Oh, God. This area, there's lots of um, broken skin. I wonder if you can see it. Lighting, it's not good. Oh my god, my dog is always off. It's a little bit sore. But it's, it's not as, like, what do you call it? Swollen as before. Okay, so. Oh, yeah, so <laughs> Computer money. Oh yeah, I'm getting ready to go to the um, job agency, which I haven't gone in a while. Uh, so, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen. I hope it's not too triggering because I have borderline personality disorder. <clears throat> uh, so, I mean, even this, I mean, I had, yeah. uh, I, I'm taking medication for moods, uh, but, um, no, which is helping, but I have a lot of uh, things to work on. I don't know why I feel so awkward saying that because when you say you have a personality disorder, it's like so like Taboo it's like oh you have a personality disorder. Are you like? Oh, you must be a You must be not a you must be a broken person to have a personality disorder but um, it's mostly due to um, Yeah, it's basically having emotions that are overwhelming. Uh, so, you know, I can get very triggered by various things and the, I can be very reactive. Um, you know. And especially with the uh, interpersonal issues, like, you know, not a lot of difficulty with that. Um, so... Yeah, so they have a label called borderline, and uh, I think that's sort of because you know I've got depression, anxiety, and these bipolar type mood swings, but they all are like I I believe they are all just uh, um, parts of the bigger thing, which is the borderline issue. They're bricks of the you know, thing, They're like yeah. Anyway, so. So yeah, dialectic boat. <clears throat> I've seen this video where this uh, they were talking. This this lady was she was a doctor. She was talking about borderline and she was talking about like how there is this thing called social cognition, and people with borderline because usually they when they when they were young kids the emotions w weren't validated or recognized and this is true for me because my parents never. I didn't have an emotional life, so I feel invisible, and that's this thing which people with borderline have is they they have this identity where they feel like they're in, in, invisible. They don't know who they are because because when you're young, your inner emotional life is not validated or recognized. So you know, my mom probably has BPD as well because she's she's got the same issue where she doesn't know how to talk about emotions. But then again, that's for a lot of people. So because when you're young, your emotions aren't, you know, validated, you don't know what you're feeling and, you know, so, and people like, and so there's this thing called social cognition where, um, for me, I have a very limited number of representations of what people are or what emotions are, you know, some people, they might have such a, so many symbols uh, in their brain to describe various emotional states or this or, or you know or, 
Yeah, things like that. For me, my vocabulary, in a sense, emotional vocabulary, is not very developed. Now, this doesn't mean I'm, I'm not um, unintelligent, because they, she did say that a lot of people with BPD are quite intelligent. And this creates, this might, um, because they tend to be intelligent in other areas, people might think, oh, this person must, you know, they wouldn't think that you would have a deficiency in this kind of emotional or the social cognition area. So that's another barrier to diagnosis. Um, so, um, maybe I'll link that video anyway. So this is, this is a pretty good video. Um, so I tend to see, the reason why people with borderline tend to see people in black and white, they have this splitting issue is because they, like I, you know, they have a limited, their like social cognition is, is not as developed. So they have, so they, when they look at people, they put them in either bad or good, or, 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 or the, you know, it's hard for them to see people in a, it's very difficult for me, for instance, like if someone does something I don't like, it's hard for me to look at that person as, a human being which is more than what they did to hurt me you know it's so difficult for me to do that um, because my I am because uh, I, I feel so overwhelmed by that single offense um, so for example with my employment consultant like because of one little thing she did I didn't like my whole perception of her is negative <laughs> It's like, I don't like you because you did that one thing that offended me. Yeah, that's so hard for me to actually see someone as, uh, you know, something more. Mm -hmm. oh, shit. I don't want to call it this. So I've got this BPD, uh, you know, people with BPD have the, they have the, um, they're very intense emotions, they're reactive, they have this identity issue, because the identity issue mostly comes from the fact that they, as children, uh, you know, they might have experienced trauma, you know, for me, yes, physical abuse and sexual abuse and the fact that I, my em emotional life wasn't validated. And I have a temper temperament, you know, every child has a temperament, like my sister, for instance, I don't know, I don't know if she's got, uh, she might have a more of a narcissistic personality. <laughs> My sister is more narcissistic than borderline, but you can have comorbid issues. Um, yeah, so anyway, yeah, so it's very important, like, when you're raising children to validate their emotions, because this is how they learn who they are. And because as a caregiver has to mirror the emotion the child is having, so then the child knows, oh, this is, I don't know, it's a complicated thing. Anyway, I still have to look into it a bit more, but one thing I know is like, you, you, as a caregiver, it's very important not to neglect the child's uh, emotions. Because most parents, they think that if you feed the child and you, you put the child in the house and you provide for all those physical outward thing, and then people think, oh, I'm a good parent, but people don't understand that there's this other part, which is the emotional part, which is also very, very important to the child's developmental needs and their future well-being. Um, no, I'm trying to, I don't know if I can cover that bottom part up. It's actually better for me because it's, these days, this part over here is not like that greenish thing. It's you know, there are only a few hairs left around here, I've noticed, but, um, um, um I don't know, I don't know, oh, I'll just leave it there, you know, this is the electrolysis, this is going to be a long process, so I've got to be patient. Uh, I got up at six o'clock today, so 
I am pleased with myself. I, 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 I don't want to be too hard on myself. Uh, what other things do people have? Uh, yeah, mood swings. Uh, you know, depression. Uh, yeah. Also, like, um, you know, sometimes I can be very hyper. That's a whole that bipolar type issue. Uh, but, you know, because I'm taking this uh, mood stabilizer, Lamictal, the first week I took it, I was feeling so good. The second week, I, I became more irritable. That that's maybe because, um, and I've been having a, a difficulty sleeping, like, um, you know, I've been having difficulty sleeping. Maybe this because because I'm, my diet is not good, because I'm drinking two cups of coffee a day. Uh, and, oh, and, you know, I'm... Um, uh, I'm not eating. I haven't eaten my veggies too for the past few days, so maybe that's causing the sleep problems uh, and the irritability. Um, also, I need to go up my my dosage has to go up to one hundred milligrams. Now I'm only doing twenty five, but I have to do it slowly, otherwise you'll get this kind of uh, like the skin necro <laughs> necrolysis or something where your skin burns off you. Uh, you could die. Yeah, it's a horrible side effect. But um, yeah, the Lamictal has been quite good generally in keeping my moods and the, not too bad. You know, it's really the first week I felt like amazing. I felt like oh my god, this is so. I felt like so good. But the second week I've been a bit more um, irritable. So yeah, that's so. Uh, doing um <laughs> so I haven't been taking care of my diet I haven't, you know I've been I think this past two weeks have been particularly stressful for me because I had to go to the psychologist and I had to then I had to see the dentist because of my tooth I got a hole in my tooth and you know because of the whole we had to make an appointment to see my employment consultant all of that caused was these these external stress factors caused me to my response was you know maladaptive <laughs> i started you know, drinking coffee and not taking care of myself whereas um so that caused me have caused or contributed to uh some kind of irritability type thing uh, yeah so that might be it <coughs> yeah, yeah I'm just gonna have to go to the what do you say um Go to the, the appointment is at um eleven thirty. So you know, I'm just trying to take it easy. I wash my hands. I wash my hands. The scar is pretty bad on the bottom. It's like very bad. This is this blanket I ordered. It's like sixty-five dollars, and look at it. It's like it's uh, this. It's small. It's not. Uh, this is. Oh my god. <laughs> it's like what the hell. Uh, I don't know, I feel kind of fat. I haven't been you know, eating properly yet. 
Oh, that's not good. I don't feel me. Fattish or something. Uh, uh, so, yeah, so I got a response from this Catholic church today. I, I was like, I thought they were like, uh, they didn't want anything to do with me. Because, um, yeah, I'm interested in, uh, I don't know, religion, Christianity, well, Catholicism particularly. I would love, I don't know, it would be really interesting to go to church. Um, I, I went to that church once before, but I, I don't know, I didn't... I just, I don't know why I stopped, I don't know. Uh, this is before I transitioned, way a long time, I don't know, maybe 20s or something, so. I don't know, so, might be something I could do. So, yeah, so it's 10.46 a.m. I will uh, wait. I will, I will leave at 11. Uh, 11 o'clock. Uh, because my, my appointment is eleven thirty, she said I, I could have the appointment in a private room away from the regular, you know, main area. That would be nice. That would be nice. Uh, my face looks fat. Well, I haven't been taking care of myself for the past week and a half. It's like, that's what happens, you know. You have to work hard every day <laughs> uh, so yeah so yeah I mean uh, how do I have borderline personality disorder and it's good to acknowledge that and accept that because then you can treat yourself uh, yeah. so the reason I, I um, anyway there are so many ways to treat BPD you know there's, there's mostly it's mindfulness there are some videos um, I'm seeing, and I also got this, ordered this book. And it's like a book of skills, and there's another another thing called mentalism, no mentalization or something. Maybe that's got to do with the that schema. Mentalism. Is that what it is? Oh no, no, that's not it. Mentalization. Mentalize, mentalization based treatment is an integrated form of psychotherapy. Oh. Yeah, it's designed for individuals with borderline personality disorder. Oh, look, this is the thing that is this person called Peter Fornaggi. Some of these individuals suffer from disorganized attachment and fail to develop, develop a robust mentalizing mentalization capacity uh, yeah okay so they you know they define mentalization as the process by which we implicitly and explicitly interpret the actions of oneself and others as meaningful on the basis of intentional mental states yeah, that's why I, my when I when I just find it so difficult to un, relate to people, and because of that, you know that um, failed developmental process of that emotional understanding. You know. uh, that's in Wikipedia. You can find it out. Mentalization based treatment. Uh, Anyway, so I'll come back later. See that? Scale. Going down. <sighs> so I finished the interview. And it was it was okay. I was calm. <laughs> I didn't uh, talk a lot like I usually do if I get anxious. So she said, so I'm going to be seeing a counselor and she said that she can try and put me into a different program that's more for disability. Um, it's not like a disability pension, but it's like for people who are seeking work, 
but who are in like who have some kind of problems that's going to stop them from looking for work so so it's like i'll have more of a supportive system and you know so so that's what they're going to try and put me in which i think that's a very good idea um I'll, so i have to look for like 10 jobs a month and i can report it online and i just have to see the counselor every thursday or something so i think i think that's um manageable for now i mean i, I still feel anxious about it but um yeah take it one day at a time so I was calm you know, I didn't I was thinking about my I don't know I just maybe it's a medication you know it's like usually maybe I'm you know maybe it's helping me not get too over the top or something I don't know so I'm gonna go home anyway